Company and I'm the Poultry Advisor for Shagas. We are delivering this webinar series to offer up-to-date information on a wide range of topics. All of the series and previous series we have operated are recorded and are available on the Chagas website and also on the YouTube page. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Carla Gomez. Carla is the representative of Animal Health Ireland and Carla is going to discuss the biosecurity audits being offered by AHI free to poultry producers. As always, I want to draw your attention to the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. I want you to submit any questions you have in relation to the audits or in relation to anything that AHI are doing um, around biosecurity. And Carla and myself will cover these at the end of Carla's presentation. On September 8th, I'm going to be joined by Paula Kelleher from Balcas to discuss biomass boilers and the fuel options for those boilers. This is a good follow on from the webinar, which was given by the two SEAI representatives, Ray Langton and Dennis Neary, and from Martin Dempsey, broiler farmer in Mayo, which is available to view on the Chagas website. So I hope you can all join me on September 8th. Carla, I'm going to ask you to share your screen and to, to kick off with your presentations and uh, we, we cover any questions that people have sent in at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you for inviting me to, to be here. So. I'll start by sharing my screen, so bear with me, because it does take a little bit of time to go through this technology stuff and my pointer disappearing with this. So hopefully you can see my slides. Yeah, we so, can see everything clearly there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So uh, as Rebecca mentioned, uh, my name is Carla Gomez. I'm from Animal Health Ireland. And, um, I'll and the webinar today is just to um, speak about the biosecurity assessments for broilers and layer units that uh, Animal Health Ireland is uh, managing. So um, for the ones not familiar with Animal Health Ireland, it's just uh, brought some one slide here. So what is Animal Health Ireland? So we are a public-private partnership, um, and and what is a, a private-public partnership? A partnership is a, a joint approach within the public and private sector uh, to agree responsibilities and share resources uh, to achieve uh, a common objective. Um, and these brings benefits in terms of stronger national economy, greater trust, reduce business risk, and increase opportunities, improve public health, and addressing societal issues. So what it means is that our funding, half of our funding comes from the government, and another half comes from the industry. And we do have several programs, um, one for the pig sector and several programs for the cattle sector, like uh, disease specific, like BVD, Yonis and, and mastitis. And, not, and also for, uh, for bee farmers, the beef health check program. Uh, so we don't have a poultry, uh, a poultry program. Uh, currently, and um, but we do um, uh, manage uh, these biosecurity assessments, which I'll, I'll speak um, a little bit afterwards. But still, in the private-public uh, uh, public-private partnerships, uh, there are two very good examples uh, in terms of national policy that were developed in thinking uh, in this partnership, being the National Farm Animal Health Strategy and also the National Farm Animal Biosecurity Strategy. So I would recommend you to at least read this last document, the, the Biosecurity Strategy published by, by DAFM. So moving on to the assessment. So uh, these assessments are funded by a uh, rural development uh, program. Uh, they're part of the TASA program, and TASA means uh, Target Adv Advisory on, uh, Service on Animal Health. And the funding they provide, so they, they fund one assessment per farm per year, and they are delivered by trained PVPs. So in terms of um, the, the, the assessments we are using, uh, for these assessments, we are using a tool developed by the University of Ghent called BioCheck. And you have there uh, the, um, the email address where you can assess it and, and know a little bit more about these, these assessments if you want. Um, they have this, they developed this tool for uh, the pig sector, the poultry sector, and also for the cattle sector. So we have different assessments. 
Uh, in terms of the Bioshock protocol itself, um, it, it is clear that uh, it, was, it was difficult to develop a protocol for file level because we know that uh, no protocol is suitable for every herd. So, so basically, you have to, uh, they had to develop uh, a balance between uh, biosecurity and management. But at the same time, they want to develop a tool that could also be used um, widely by the farmers and the vets. So they come up with this uh, scoring system. And they score uh, based on risks and uh, trying to quantify, quantify those risks uh, in terms of measures applied at farm level. And, and all of them are based on, on, on literature, but this idea of quantifi quantification of, of the risks is quite interesting uh, from the point of view that it is more easily perceivable by, by farmers and, and for everyone. Um, how are they, 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 they scoring? Uh, and also allows to compare their scores with different herds, uh, compare scores between countries, and also compare scores over time and see if there is any uh, progress. And also um, uh, allows also to identify which areas are, are requiring improvement. So as I mentioned, uh, the scores uh, were developed um, based on scientific research based on, on, on literature review and, on, and, they, in, and they take into account that uh, the risk is different. So the risk of disease introduction uh, is, is much higher if uh, we are dealing with live animals and a little bit lower if, uh, if it's through indirect contact, for instance, uh, people, material vehicles that cannot as, as fomite, so as, as um, sources of contamination, but, um, but usually, and depending on the disease, and they took into account several poultry diseases for developing uh, their uh, poultry biosecurity assessment um, and quantify the, the risk. But mo for most of the diseases, uh, the contact between uh, two live animals uh, increases the risk than the contact of um, a person with an animal. Um, but even so, uh, we can neglect uh, that, that risk. So each uh, management has their own uh, weighting and each subcategories, and you'll uh, understand what I mean by subcategories um, uh, later on in my presentation, has also uh, its own uh, weight that takes, takes into account uh, that evidence that comes from literature that uh, some things are more risky than other things. So all these assessments uh, are done. So as I mentioned, we use this uh, online, this this tool, this these assessments. Um, in terms of number of questions, uh, they are different. So there is uh, uh, plenty more questions for layer units than for broader units. Um, but as I mentioned, these are the assessments we're using currently. What we done is that we trained the, the PVP. So. We uh, opened this uh, training how to do these assessments uh, and the way um, and why was this training needed. The vets know all about biosecurity. Uh, it was mostly uh, to make sure that uh, there is some standardization uh, when they're doing these assessments, uh, that everyone is assessing things more or less at the same time, so we can then compare scores between farms. So after they've been trained, um, they go on farm and they do the assessments. Uh, usually, for doing the assessments, they are prompt. So, or a farmer requests the assessment, or a vet approach a farmer and ask the farmer if he wants assessment to be done. After the assessment is done, uh, then the, far, the the vet enters the data into uh, our uh, our portal, AHI portal, and the the data goes to a, a database, and then we produce uh, a report. Uh, that then uh, is sent to the vet, which will then send it to, to the farmer. And that, uh, that report consists of uh, two parts. Uh, one part that you see there in the bottom one uh, is the scores for each subcategory uh, for that specific farm. And then uh, you can compare those scores. So the, the, the farmer can compare uh, those scores with the country average and the world average that is provided by the, the BioShack website. 
And then, then the first part of the report, um, which I'll discuss here, so the summary report, um, he, he does uh, also provide a little bit more than just the scoring. So uh, the VAT for completing uh, these assessments, he also needs to provide, or for considering complete uh, these assessments to be completed, they need to provide three recommendations uh, in terms of what the farmer should do to improve biosecurity in that specific farm. And these recommendations should be farm specific and taking into account what is being assessed. And uh, we also asked the vet to uh, provide those recommend or start uh, providing recommendations that can be easily implemented by the farmers and wouldn't require a massive investment like changing a building. Um, so uh, start with uh, the ones that you can immediately apply or uh, short term uh, implement and then start planning for the long-term investments. Like if you need to uh, change building, uh, then that's something to, to bear in mind, but long-term, not short-term. So in these slides, uh, you can see um, the vets that have been trained. So just their location of the veterinary practices. But if you uh, want to know which specific vets, you can go to HI website, there's the the address there, training, poultry training, and you can uh, can find the, the contacts of the vets that have been trained to these to do these assessments. Um, just these vets can do these assessments. We do uh, run frequent training sessions to, to new vets uh, that want to do these assessments. So uh, if your vet hasn't uh, been trained yet, uh, let him know to uh, get in touch with us in HI and we'll make sure to, to let the vet know when there is a new training session. So let's now speak a little bit more about uh, biosecurity and this assessment itself. So um, what is biosecurity? So biosecurity is a combination of all measures taken to reduce the risk of introduction and spread of diseases. And these uh, being at her level, region, or country level, or even um, European level, uh, continent level, and so on. It is a complex uh, concept in itself uh, because no one size fits all. So uh, not all recommendations can be applied at the same, in the same farm. So they, they really need to be uh, farm specific to uh, achieve uh, the best outcome. But why it is important? Because usually if you have, uh, if you implement good measures and have a better biosecurity, you'll have a higher health status you will improve your production results, being that in terms of growth, feed conversion, infirmity. You will use less uh, antimicrobials and, 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 and you'll have uh, some economic uh, benefit at the end of, um, of the day. So it's quite, quite important to have good biosecurity, especially because um, you can have the best of the vaccination programs, but if you don't have uh, a good biosecurity, quite probably your vaccination program is going to fail. So the biosecurity is basically uh, part of the pillars that you need before you implement um, um, detailed animal health programs. So biosecurity usually uh, is divided into two. Uh, there are different definitions for that. I usually use this one, so external and with uh, external biosecurity, external biosecurity, what we're referring to is all the measures that are put in place to stop or reduce the introduction of disease or the, um, or the introduction of the risk into a farm. Uh, and then we have internal biosecurity that there's usually the measures put in place to stop or reduce the spread of infection of or a risk within a farm. So now let's look to the several sections of the of the, the biosecurity assessments we are using. Um, and we're going to use that and look at them separately for broilers and, and layers. So you have there all the subcategories for external biosecurity. 
So for bro uh, broilers, we have purchases of one day old chicks, the population of broilers, feed and water supply, removal of manure and dead animals, entrance of personnel and visitors, supply of material, infrastructure and biological vectors, and location of the farm. So we have very similar sections for layers, uh, but uh, you have for layers two extra sections, that is the purchase of layers and transport of eggs. The sections there um, highlighted in bold are the sections that uh, uh, for the bi this biosecurity assessment do have a higher score or have higher weight. So that means that they are considered uh, more risky um, than the other sections. In terms of internal biosecurity, uh, the sections considered are disease management, cleaning infection, materials and measures between houses, and then for layers, we have an extra section called uh, egg management. And once again, the, the, the sections highlighted there at both are the ones uh, with an extra weight. Um, so considered as more risky if not implemented properly than, than the other sections. So biosecurity in itself is a joint venture. It's not just the farmer responsibility, it's a joint venture with everyone, with the vet, with the animal supplier, the advisors, the government and sector organizations, because there is so much um, ongoing traffic and inbound traffic to the farm. And, and usually uh, is something that is often threatened by lack of time. So usually people don't implement and or don't do the things that they should be doing because they don't have enough time. So now, uh, instead of uh, going here through all the um, measures that should be applied or not applied because you already, uh, there was um, a, a, already a webinar about biosecurity, uh, and about that at farm level, what I'm going to present now is the results of the, um, of the surveys that uh, we got so far. So uh, these started, the survey started in October 2019, and the results I'm bringing here is from October 2019 to, um, to, to this Monday. So in terms of broiler units, uh, 300, uh, 337 surveys have been uploaded so far, and these surveys belong to 214 broiler farms. Uh, while for uh, layer units, we just have 82 surveys belonging to 68 layer farms. What this means is that uh, in terms of coverage, um, what we have so far is that um, more than 50% of the commercial broiler farms uh, have been assessed and, uh, and have done at least one assessment. But the same doesn't apply to, to the layer farm. So uh, the coverage there is uh, much lower. Uh, so um, bear that in mind uh, with the results I'm going to present, because that means that you can do a direct compa comparison between uh, the results for broilers and layers in terms of scoring, because the, the coverage for layers is, is so low uh, compared to the broilers. So um, we might have some, some, some bias in the um, in the later results, because of that, quite probably the layer farms that have been assessed so far are, are probably the best ones. Uh, so you'll see why they have um, good results compared, or I'm saying good results, but a little bit better results than the, um, than the broiler farms. But also something else that you can see there, if you look to the to the broilers numbers, is that we have um, almost 100%, not 100 broiler units that have been assessed more than once. Um, so that's, that's quite good because then uh, allows allow us to compare results for the same unit over time, if they are improving, if they're not improving uh, and so on. So starting with the results for, and uh, my, give me just a second because it's not changing. So just change this way. Okay. So um, what you have there in this graph is the national average uh, for those uh, 214 um, broiler units. 
so for uh, external uh, biosecurity in green, internal biosecurity in, in orange, and overall biosecurity in gray. So um, I can translate that to values. So 66% uh, percent of score for external biosecurity, 76 for internal biosecurity, and then overall score of 69. And then we can split, uh, and, and not split, but look at these results in a bit more details per section. And that's what you see there. So a green are the sections for external vice security and at orange the sections for internal vice security. And one thing you can hopefully see, hopefully see my pointer now uh, is that there are some sections that uh, are not scoring uh, so well compared to other sections. One of them, for instance, is the population of uh, broilers, removal uh, of manure and dead uh, animals, and also um, feed and water supply and supply of material um, in terms of external biosecurity don't score uh, so well as, um, as other sections, like for, for instance, infrastructure and uh, biological vectors. In terms of internal biosecurity, cleaning and defection is not scoring uh, so well. So if we look to some of the practices uh, in these sections and starting with the population of brawlers, we can understand why they don't score so well at national average. So um, one of the questions part of the section, the population of broilers is, uh, if the transport vehicle taking the poultry to the slaughterhouses, traders or individuals is always empty on the arrival at farm. And you can see there from the replies that uh, most of the times it, it is not. So that uh, introduces a risk um, in terms of um, these animals that are in, the, in, these, in these vehicles and, and the vehicle itself uh, to uh, introduce disease uh, in, in that specific farm. Another question, for instance, is are in, still the same par part of this uh, section is, are individuals and traders allowed to enter the stables um, where direct contact is possible with the animals? And, and you can see there that um, it is possible. Um, uh, and that, once again, introduced another risk so, uh, of uh, visitors um, introducing uh, disease uh, by, by the simple fact of, um, of, of contacting with several farms. In terms of feed and water supply, um, one of the questions is, is the farm divided into a, a clean and a dirty area? So I'll explain a bit the concept of clean and dirty area. I think it was already explained um, before, but um, I'll go through it. So what's the advice at farm level is to separate and have what they could see a clean and dirty area with a clear se separation between these two areas. So the dirty area, because we know that there is a lot, a lot of uh, inbound traffic and outbound traffic for a farm. So in terms of feed, manure, external transportation of animals and so on, what is advised is that that kind of transport should be done just using the dirty area uh, in the farm. And we should reserve the clean area is only for internal movements at farm level and only uh, when um, the equipment that is brought in, in, into a farm is uh, fully uh, clean and disinfected. So if we have that separation, clear separation uh, in place uh, uh, in the farm, we reduce the risk of uh, introducing disease uh, through these um, uh, inbound movements. The dirty area of the road also should be the one that's going to be used for removal of carcasses. Um, and that also should be the one that easily accessible to visitors. But before the visitor enters the farm, we should have a separation where uh, he changes uh, his boots and clothes, uh, for example. In terms of supply of material, uh, another question is, are specific preventive measures taken for material supply? So are the, that material that is brought into the farm, uh, is, is it disinfected before is using the farm? 
And, and as you can see there from the reply thread, uh, most of the times is not. So uh, once again, that constitutes a risk of introducing disease. Looking in terms of internal biosecurity uh, and looking just to cleaning infection, some of the, the questions there. So as uh, do vehicles enter the farm after passing through disinfection paths? As, as you can see there from the answer, uh, mostly not. And if there is a farm hygiene lock present uh, at farm level, as you can see, once again, uh, most of the farms don't, don't have that. Uh, in terms of hygiene lock, there's uh, different types of hygiene locks, but mainly the concept there is that you have um, a separation and um, a place where visitors and also staff, before entering the farm, they'll change their, their clothes and their boots. Um, they can also have a, a shower. It, depends of uh, the, the farm, but at least changing the boots, it is uh, essential. So it is, and therefore it is essential to have these designated uh, space and, 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 and room where they can do it. Um, and, and there's no way of them walking into the farm without passing through that room and, and changing the, their boots, for, for example. In terms of materials and measures between compartments, uh, as you can see there uh, in that question, is all specific loading, including boots available? For most of the farms is not. So uh, once again, uh, a way um, not having these is a way of introducing uh, disease from one um, house to another house. Now looking to the layers national uh, results. Um, so in terms of external biosecurity, uh, the results got so far got the score of 69%, internal biosecurity 84%, and overall biosecurity 77%. As I mentioned, uh, in its face value, they are higher than for broilers, but uh, bear in mind that um, the, the number of layer units assessed has been really low, so um, it's not a fair comparison to compare these results with the broilers due to that coverage. We can also decompose those results into the, into the sections, and, um, as you can see there. Um, and once again, uh, green external by security, orange uh, internal by security. And just look into that, it clearly stands out that the section of transport of eggs um, is definitely uh, require improvement, really doesn't score well. The population of hands also uh, doesn't doesn't score so well in terms of external by security. In terms of internal by security, met, uh, materials and measures between houses and egg management are the ones that um, don't score so well. So look into some of the practices in these sections and starting with transport of eggs. Uh, one of the questions there is, does the driver have access to the egg, facility of, uh, egg facilities of the farm? And as you can see there from the answers, uh, in most of the units, it does. Uh, different, um, different rooms, so some of them just the egg room, some of them also to the storeroom, and some of them to, to both. And, um, and the other question is, one of the other questions is, is the transport vehicle for eggs empty on arrival at farm? And as you can see there, uh, most of the times is not. So this is just an example of how uh, in infection can be introduced at farm level. Uh, and I know that you you just probably just think, oh, but the drivers just have access to the to the X facility, so it's not going to the houses. But are you sure that you're uh, you have dedicated staff just for the 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 eggs rooms and and the houses? Aren't you sometimes using the same staff members? So, um, so all of these little things do contribute to um, to spread disease um, uh, within a farm, to introduce and spread disease within a farm. In terms of supply of material, uh, as in the broiler, um, as we've seen in the broilers, most of the farms don't uh, disinfect uh, the, the material uh, once is um, when they brought it to, to, to the farm. And then uh, in terms of internal biosecurity, um, 
some of the measures uh, that are also a required improvement is, for instance, the implementation of uh, IT lock at house level. And, um, and that doesn't mean that you need to change your, your clothes, but at least you should be changing the staff and visitors should be changing their boots between houses uh, to uh, decrease the risk of transmission of a pathogen from one house to, to, to another house. So these are some of the measures that I just pick, it, pick up uh, from the results that the national level, um, I consider that uh, they could could be better and, 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 and could be improved. But another question is, what can we do with these data? How can it be useful for, uh, for the farmers? Uh, so as I, as I mentioned, currently they just received uh, their report uh, about their situation at their farm level. So, and, um, but ideally, if there was funding for that, um, you could do a little bit more. So you could do benchmarking. So, um, and I explained this, this graph um, uh, in a minute. So it's just a, the, it's just a similar graph as the one I show for, for the broilers in terms of, of the results. But instead of just showing the national average here, what I show is the spread of the results. So you have the results of all the assessments here. Um, and the stick line here is the median, so meaning that 50% of the farms had a score like this. So basically, um, from a range of zero, that's very poor by security, or to a range of 100, very good by security, what we would like is all of these uh, bars to be pushed as much as possible to, uh, to close to 100. But these are the results we got. And what you see here with this red dot is the specific results of one farm, just pick up one farm. And so just looking to that graph, you can clearly say that that farm compared to his peers um, is scoring quite well for purchase of one day uh, old chicks and actually for the population of broilers. He's not scoring so well for feed and water supply because the vast majority of the farms are scoring higher than that. The same for removal of manure and dead animals, entrance of personnel and visitors, infrastructure and biological vectors, and then in terms of internal biosecurity for cleaning, infection, and materials and measures between houses. So just by doing this in terms of benchmarking, uh, that specific farmer would definitely would clearly identify what are the sections that uh, is not performing so well compared to his peers to. To, to the rest of the, of the farmers where um, um, he or she should, um, should improve. Another way of, of benchmarking that is um, if we just pick up, so um, previously we have here all the sections, but let's just pick up this one, the depopulation, the depopula depopulation of broilers and look to it. So all the farm results are here. Uh, you have the, here the farm that uh, scores um, worse for, uh, for, for the section. And here the farms that score uh, really good. So 100%, so best than that, they couldn't. And here is with the, that red dot is, is, is this bar. So these red bars. So this is just a different way of, of benchmarking, but it clearly shows that farmer that in terms of their population of, of, of broilers um, is not here, is, is, is not scoring so badly as, as most of the farmers, but uh, also not scoring uh, so well as this uh, top, top one. So there's, there's still room for improvement. As I mentioned, when uh, farmers use this tool over time, then they can all uh, they can also look at their improvement or not over time. So uh, what we have here in this graph uh, are the results uh, for just for broilers, for those almost 100 units that have been assessed more than once, comparing uh, past visits with most recent visits. And um, it's not so obvious, but in terms of uh, external bear security, there was an improvement, a very slight improvement. 
in terms of internal biosecurity, uh, in terms of uh, median, the, the median is the same, but there was some farms over here that actually have not improved. Uh, I've done a little bit worse, but there were some farms over here that did improve. And then this is just the result overall for that group in terms of overall biosecurity. And, and, and basically, there's not much evidence in terms of, um, of change, uh, but you can see that the extremes have, have decreased. So at least is, is at national level, those ones are, are quite more concentrated in terms of, of results. Um, so this can also be, be used by the, the farmer to just to uh, see where he's going, if he's achieving what he's uh, aiming for in terms of um, improving uh, its scores. And then just to finalize my presentation, I would just like to reinforce again about these biosecurity assessments. Um, they are free of charge currently. Um, just uh, the list of the, um, of the trained PVPs is available in Animal Health, Animal Health Ireland website. If you haven't uh, yet availed this service, please do avail this service and, and, and do it um, before the risk of avian influenza season starts. Um, so you can uh, at least identify what are the weakness uh, at your farm. And, uh, and make sure that uh, you implement measures to address those weakness so you can be prepared for uh, that um, risky season um, that uh, we are approaching. Um, and feel free to contact me if you have any other questions related with these um, biosecurity assessments. Um, just thank you and I'll stop sharing. Great, thanks so much, Carla. Um, it's a, an excellent opportunity for our producers to, to really take advantage of uh, such a, a great asset in terms of a free audit. I think it's very important to mention that, that, that it is free. Um, it's just a matter of contacting your vet and, and arranging that audit to see where maybe some, some downfalls are occurring on your farm. Very often a fresh set of eyes can be crucial to picking up where there may be a slight fault um, and they could be things that you're seeing day to day, you're doing on your day to day rounds and you don't even realise. So um, I'll just run through some of the questions and um, I'll ask you to continue sending in any questions you have in relation to the audits, how to, to contact the vets or, or what's involved, how long it takes, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I suppose you went through some of the kind of common issues that are found on, on the farms um, there in terms of broilers, maybe we're looking at the, the what, what a figure that shocked me was 94.4% of vehicles don't actually clean on entry to the farms. Um, and for me, I think that's that's quite a, a simple thing to pick up on. A knapsack doesn't cost an awful lot. Having a lock gate at that knapsack and, and asking the driver to come out and spray down their vehicle. Uh, would you think that's a, a very common thing across layer and broiler farms? Or is that something that the farmers can easily change, Carla? I think that's something that they can easily change, but it does look like it's, it's common between um, the results we have so far from, from broilers and, uh, and layers farms. Um, but also something that um, I think, the, and, and I must say that um, I think the poultry farmers do have in general, uh, very good biosecurity levels and not just uh, so, um, if you compare it with the with the big farmers, uh, you do have, especially internal biosecurity, uh, much better than the, um, the big sector in itself. But I think you just have to look in conjunction with your VAT, and that's good when you have some external eyes there uh, that have experience uh, in practical solutions to implement things that are practical to your farm and would work in your farm. And, and, and see, sometimes it's difficult to uh, reconfigure, com reconfigure completely a, a farm to uh, make sure that the team bonding vehicles, um, they can come, but um, it's just to a part of the, of the farm that, that then won't constitute a risk uh, to, to the rest of the farm. So my advice would be just uh, get in touch with your vet, do the assessment, and then 
look what are the things that you can change, little things that you can change that actually will make such a big difference at the end of the day. Because sometimes these, these little things, and as I mentioned in the presentation, they sometimes are not implemented just because uh, everyone is running around and, and time is, is, is running out and you don't have time to, to do these things. And you just think, oh, it's a minor thing. It won't matter. Um, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> when, when these things are things that need to be done every single day. Um, yes. yeah. So, um, so, yeah. Yeah, I guess you mentioned that um, in terms of biosecurity, you can look at external and internal. But if we take a maybe a deeper step we can look at conceptual which is the placement of your firm and once that's decided it's you can't change that structural biosecurity then is down to the, the materials and, and building that you've used um, and it's important for those that maybe are in the process of, of looking at becoming a new poultry producer to consider all these things using materials is very easy to clean putting in a wheel dip that's something that can be added to a firm yes it might be an expensive an expense at the time uh, but how expensive is it if there, you have you lost a flock of birds so when you exactly. weigh up the risk of a put in installing a biosecurity measure it's, it's probably minor in the cost of losing a flock but the next step is your operational biosecurity and that's your day-to-day -day things the things that carla has outlined that you know it's changing your footwear uh, using ppe ensuring that anyone coming on farm signs the visitor log uses the, the foot dips, you know, uses PPE, and, and you as a producer should have that on farm to be able to supply that. Um, so And they are basic things. So as, yeah. as you're saying, some of the things do require major investment, do require some thinking, especially if it's a new farm. Yes. Uh, the location is something that once the farm is there, you can change. Things just grow around and there's, there's, there's things that you can, you can do to try to limit the risk. But there are things, other risks that you just have to live with it because you can just pick up your farm and just move to another location. But usually the things that fail are those little things, the operational ones, yes. the things that require a change of mindset, even in the staff, uh, because they've been doing these things all the time this way. And then suddenly you just have done, no, but that's not the proper way. Let's go and do it this way. And, and it takes some time until their mind change until they start getting used to, to their behavior. <laughs> and, 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 and then when they do, then it's something that they implement easily. But is that in the transition period that uh, you as the farm owner will need to keep reminding them, this is the way I want you to do. This is the way I want you to do. So um, all these things um, take time and, um, and some of them don't cost much money, but uh, yes, take time. Exactly. Um, another one that um, you mentioned was the hygiene lock, and that was something for both broilers and layers. Um, for me, a hygiene lock um, should be, you know, that that's just the changing um, of, of clothing as you enter into the houses. A very easy measure to put into any storeroom is a step over barrier. It doesn't have to be um, an expensive uh, investment. It's most farmers um, are, are very handy with their, their hands anyway and should be able to to build one of these. Um, and it just puts a physical barrier where you need to change your clothes, where you need to change your footwear when you're entering into the house and then change coming back into the clean area or back into the dirty area. So you need to have those distinct zones of clean and dirty. Um, and a step over barrier that goes to the ground is usually the best measure of doing that. Again, not an expensive thing, but a change of, of mindset is required. Um, Definitely, I agree with you on that one, Carla. It's, it's a change of mindset. It's, it's breaking the, the old habit. Um, but if you don't realise that what you're doing is incorrect, you're not going to be able to change that. So that's bringing in the likes of the vets that are have been trained by AHI to, to assess what you're doing, answering the questions. You may not even realise you're doing something slightly incorrect that's putting you at risk. So I, I can't really stress it enough. Bring the vets out. It is free. Um, it's going to be free from right up until 2023 anyway, so you have another little while. But for me, I think going forward into the next couple of weeks, as we head towards maybe a risky period for avian influenza, it's really crucial to do it. Uh, have all your biosecurity measures in place and uh, be ready for, for the oncoming season. Um, 
So I just I suppose we've talked a lot about broilers and layers, Carla. Um, we haven't mentioned anything in relation to turkeys, ducks, broiler breeders, or even pullet rearing. Is it fair to say, though, that the broiler and layer audits that are there at the moment can overlap onto the ducks and, and turkeys, pullet rearing and breeders, that maybe these farmers can bring the vets out, get a, a, even if it's a partial assessment done, there is some of them things going to overlap. And by looking at the results, it's common enough things that are overlapping on broiler and layers anyway, in relation to hygiene locks, you know, vehicle disinfection and, and just day-to-day -day management, which is probably going to be similar, you know, in terms of changing footwear, clothing, not sharing equipment. So is that possible for, for ducks, turkeys, bull rear and breeders to, to access them? I know it's not specific for them, but mm -hmm. it may help. So uh, as I say, the, the vice, these biosecurity assessments were developed by University of Ghent. And um, so uh, they're, um, they're not, Designs, they, they were designed specifically just for for broiler and, and, and layer units um, in terms of, of chickens. Um, so they weren't designed for, for ducks and um, other types of production. But actually, if you go through the, the, the questionnaire itself, you, you'll see that a lot of the questions apply directly. So they are very generic. Gen they're not chicken specific. Uh, so they could apply directly to, to those type of farms. Um, the only thing is that uh, then in terms of, of the scoring, so um, if, if you unit was using these ones, you would have to uh, ignore the questions that um, are more chicken specific, like stocking densities and, and, and other things, uh, would have to ignore those, those questions because uh, they're not specific to, to their farm. But even so, they, uh, I, I still think they, they could learn and take advantage of, uh, of, the, um, of the tool itself. I think it's part of the plans uh, for UGAN to uh, develop further these, uh, these questionnaires and, 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 and make them more, more specific for, um, for that kind of production. So uh, ducks, turkeys, and so on. Um, but I don't know just when, when they're going to be uh, out and released to, to, to the public for, for that. But for now, that's, that's what we have. But this, uh, I still think that um, those units should, should use them and at least use the, the questions that are generic and applied across all those um, species. Um, and, and it would take some benefit because the risks are mostly the same. Yes, yeah. Um, and I suppose just one thing, um, farmers aren't going to be, if they fall down in one area of biosecurity, it's not going to be a penalty of any description. No, the no. Idea, the idea of this is just to, no. to benefit you and help you. Yeah, yeah. This is just uh, a tool for improving. This is not a tool for finger pointing or things like that or um, going to be used for any penalty or, or, or things like that. No, it's just, this is just a tool for improving animal health to uh, allow you to identify your weakness and work um, against those weaknesses, so, so towards improving these things. And as I mentioned, um, no one is expecting you uh, in reality to, to go and change all your uh, poultry housing just because that uh, it was considered unacceptable or not unacceptable, but um, a risk. Yes. Just because you have to work with what you have, of course, that when you're planning for the future, you should plan for uh, a better thing at the long term. But this is just to, a tool to be used to improve, not to, a tool um, to, to, as I say, reinforce again, not a tool to, to penalize anyone yes. at all. Um, the information, because it's funded by Daphne, the information is, sh is shared by Daphne, but to be frank, uh, what Daphne have asked requests so far is just numbers, uh, never request uh, any data from specific farm. So they just want to know uh, national figures, average figures in terms of number assessments done uh, and results per sections and which measures uh, are not going, not be implemented um, so uh, so well widely. Not, they never requested uh, a specific farm result or to, to see the details of a specific farm. It was never intended uh, to, to be like that or to be used for that. So, um, so yes, yeah, just to reinforce that message. Yes, yeah. So it's definitely, um, it's, it's free to all farmers, uh, to all poultry farmers, um, very worthwhile to do. Um, it's just to assess your farm, to pick up on the weaknesses and, and prepare you for, for any risks that may come your way. Um, 
Unfortunately, we've just run out of time. Um, brilliant presentation. Um, I really can't stress enough uh, how important it is to, to get this done, to take advantage of it while it is available to us for free. Um, as Carla has said, uh, you can access what vets are uh, available to do this on the Animal Health Ireland website. Uh, Carla's presentation, along with this recording, will be available on the Chagas website to view uh, after today, along with any, uh, all of our other presentations, including the one by Connor Sheehy on biosecurity and also from our previous webinars uh, by Joe Flaherty and, and James Greaves and the likes on, on biosecurity. So be sure to check those out. Carla, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us and for preparing that presentation. Really worthwhile and really highlights just exactly where we can all improve on our day-to-day -day measures on farm. Uh, so thank you to all for joining me and we will see you all on September 8th when I'll be joined by Paula Kelleher from Balcast to discuss more on biomass boilers and the SSRH. Thanks again and mind yourselves. Thank you.